Did you ever try scotch? Do you want to? You want to know a little bit more about it? Or are you getting into scotch and you want to know a lot more about it? Well, today I'm going to talk about scotch, how it's made, the regions of scotch and the different tastes between them, and a lot more. So stay tuned. Welcome back, my fellow artists and doers. My name is Ben Jackson, and this is The Art of Doing. Today I want to be talking about one of my favorite drinks, scotch, how it's made, uh, the different regions and the different tastes. We've got a lot of material to go over, and in the follow-up follow video, I'm going to show you what I have in my scotch collection. So scotch is actually a very simple liquor. There's only three ingredients to scotch, water, barley, yeast, and that's it. But how does that create the myriad of different types, flavors, and distilleries in all of Scotland that have all these distinct tastes? Well, first, scotch is a bunch of water dumped on some barley until it's sprouted, and that creates malted barley. You take that malted barley, you dry it uh, over a fire, usually fired by peat, and then you mix that up, grind it up with a bunch of water, and that makes the wort, the sugar, start to come out in that water. You add a bunch of yeast, and the yeast goes to work on those sugars, turns it into a low-strength alcohol, and then it's distilled off. And what you're left with is scotch. Um, there's a little bit more in my uh, distillation, six types of liquors video, if you want to take a look at that, to a deeper dive on distillation. But basically, that's it for how you make scotch. You take the scotch, you put it in an oak barrel. It's a used oak barrel. It's either a bourbon barrel or a sherry barrel that's made out of oak, and you store it for at least three years in Scotland. Uh, if it's distilled, stored, and bottled in Scotland, they have scotch. Now, most of these scotches are much, much older than that. Um, I Really, the only age statement I see on scotch is eight years. I don't think I've seen anything younger. They go up from there. You know, I've had 20-something-year-old scotch. Uh, eight, 12, 16-year-old, uh, 18-year-old scotch is, is fairly accessible. You can find it in most stores. So what makes the vast difference in the different tastes of scotch? Water, for one, in the Speyside region, and I'll get into the regions, the River Spey has a much different taste than the waters you might find in Isla, for instance. And then additionally, the peat moss, it's actually peat moss that's used to fire the kilns that dry the malted barley. If they're in a much saltier, closer to the ocean source of water, they're going to give off a much smokier, saltier taste. And if they're in the lowland plains, they're going to give off a much grassier flavor. And so the water and the peat are, are real differentiators between the different types of flavor. Then there's the distillation itself, the type of still they use, how long they, they um, age it in the barrel, the master distiller, and how he chooses to pick these barrels all kind of go into the different tastes. So what is scotch used for? Well, there's really two different types of scotches. There's a blended scotch and a single malt scotch. So a single malt scotch is a single malted barley in a single run out of a single distillery aged and put into a barrel, and that is a single malt scotch, and I'm drinking one of those today. And I'll tell you what that is at the end of the video. Excellent. And a blended scotch is when you take multiple distilleries, and multiple different single malts, blend them together to create a different taste or a different flavor. Now, you can make mixed drinks out of scotch, and there are several very popular ones, and they're usually made from a blended scotch, but not always. One of them is called the penicillin. This is a mixed drink I'm interested in. To be honest, I haven't had many scotch mixed drinks because I'm usually trying to savor the flavor of the, of the single malt. The penicillin is basically a fancy whisk whiskey sour. It's scotch, lemon, honey, and ginger. And that's the one I probably would try if I was to uh, if I was to mix some scotch. But there's a few others. There's the Rusty Nail, the Blood and Sand. There's the Godfather, which is a Scotch Manhattan, basically. And there's a few others that are that are fairly popular. 
but a lot of times uh, scotch whiskey is just enjoyed uh, with a little bit of water, a little bit of soda, a single ice cube or two, or just straight up, which they call neat. And why is whiskey and scotch in particular usually added a couple of drops of water or some soda or a little bit of ice? Well, that really brings out the flavor and the nose of the whiskey. And there's several different ways to really bring out that that smell of that taste. So if you've got a fine single malt in front of you, one of the ways is to kind of tilt it around the glass and let the whiskey drip down. That's called seeing the legs of the whiskey. And if you do this straight before you add water, you'll really be able to see if the whiskey is not necessarily watery, but a little thicker or a little thinner in how it rolls down. Another way to taste or enjoy the flavor of the whiskey Swirl it around and take a deep sniff through your nose with your mouth a little open. That'll help you taste the smell as well as smell it. And you can pick up a bunch of different notes on the whiskey depending on the whiskey. Another one I like to do, is I take a little drop of whiskey, I rub it in my palm till it dries. And then cup your hand take a smell of that and you'll get a different flavor, a different note of the scotch than you would from just nosing it. So what are the different areas of Scotland that produce scotch? You might have heard of these different regions and again kind of make it a little inaccessible to a newer scotch drinker. Well there's four main regions, some say there's as many as six, but you've got the lowlands of Scotland, it's a very large area, but there's not a ton of distilleries there. And one of the more popular from the lowlands is Oshintoshin. The lowlands tend to be um, pretty smooth, delicate, not really hit you in the face with their flavor, kind of grassy. And uh, this Oshintoshin is actually, not this bottle obviously, but this was the first scotch I've ever tried. So this, is, um, this was, was my gateway scotch. The Highlands of Scotland is north of the Lowlands, and the Highlands are an extremely popular and wide area of different distilleries. One of the most popular Highland scotches is Glenmorangie. This is actually one of my all-time favorite scotches. The Highland scotches tend to be a lot more robust than the Lowland. They have a nutty or, or more honey flavor. But because the area is so wide and varied, some of the highlands that are closer to the sea might carry a little more um, smoky or salty type of flavor to them, again, depending on the distillery. Then you've got the Speyside, which is nestled up on the, on the northern coast of Scotland. And the Speyside really has the biggest density of distilleries. And here we have a very popular... Um, Speyside Scotch, Glenfiddich, and I, I go through quite a bit of this. This is another one of my favorites. Speysides they tend to be a more, bit more fruity, maybe some vanilla flavors, and again, depending on the distillery, you're going to have a very varied taste to these as well. And then you have the Isla, and this is, um, this is tricky spelling. Isla is spelled I-S-L-A-Y. And so uh, if you see it on a bottle, it doesn't look like it's pronounced Isla. But um, Isla is a large island on the very northern edge of Scotland. And these are very, very distinct scotches. I would say if, if you haven't tried scotch, try some of these other um, areas before you try the Isla. They're very, very peaty, very smoky, and tend to be very salty. Um, it's a very distinct taste. A lot of people love it or hate it. Um, but uh, I suggest if you've, if you've tried some scotches, definitely get your hands on some Islas. They're very amazing. And this is Lagavulin. Um, this is a Lagavulin 16-year. Uh, the rest of these are 8-year scotches. Uh, Lagavulin was very hard to find for quite a while. Um, but the 16-year, you can find it on the shelves um, if you keep an eye out. There's also Campbelltown, which is another, it's considered a region of Scotch. 
there's only three active distilleries there, and I, I almost don't um, count it as a different region. There's so few varieties there. And then there's also the islands, which um, Isla is a part of. That's a quick rundown of the four main regions of Scotland that have scotch. We talked earlier about blending different single malts into a blend. This is Johnny Walker Gold Blend. Um, Johnny Walker is a very popular blended scotch. There's Cuddy Sark. There's many different, um, different blends. And this is Johnny's Green Label. I want to say this has a lot of... I'll save that for another video. But you can taste the different single malts if you've got a really good nose for it in the different types of blends. Will it be heavier on the Isla and will this blend be smoky? Will it be heavier on the space side and will this be a much more fruity type of, of uh, blend? Um, these are some of my favorites and I think these are very representative of the different areas and regions of Scotland and a nice blend. Um, today I am drinking Glenfiddich. So good. And like I said, Glenfiddich is a very popular um, Speyside Scotch, and it's actually the biggest distillery in all of Scotland. Now, I want you to stay tuned for my next Scotch video. I'm going to show you my Scotch collection that a lot of you have been asking about. Thanks for staying with me. Let's always remember to practice kindness, practice compassion, practice humility, practice safe drinking, and let's always practice the art of doing there's some great videos over here that you might like. Click here to subscribe. And there's a great playlist down here. Thanks, everybody. Go on. That's Irish.